Hello, friend, and welcome back to my studio. I have some excellent news to share. I'm employed again. I want to make a career from my paintings, but I'm a very long way away from being able to do that practically. So I'm ecstatic to have a job again. It's actually a job I had for a little while before, so I'm already trained and good at it. I work with such a high level of technical skill that doing any task poorly, any task, is a living hell for me. And training for new jobs generally makes me feel miserable until I feel like I'm good at the job. But now I'm back at a job that I love, and you've probably never heard of it. I make dentures for my living. I don't see the patients. I'm not a dental hygienist. I actually handcraft the physical dentures that people need and wear. I'll describe to you the convoluted and technique-sensitive method of making dentures, and while I do so, I'll show some aesthetic pictures that I took from the lab. In the background, I continue plugging away at this painting. If you like my work, please subscribe and see how this painting turns out. Now, back to the story. So, say you've lost some teeth and you need a denture. Maybe you want it for a prettier smile. Maybe it's for eating. And maybe it's just a really expensive dog toy. Either way, you find the best denture clinic in the area and you get started on the process. On your first visit, they will take alginate molds of your mouth, top and bottom, teeth or no teeth. Then they send those molds down to the lab. An alginate is kind of like a hardening putty. If you bite into Play-Doh, you'll see a similar impression. The lab, me, mixes up some stone powder and water and carefully pours it into the mold, avoiding bubbles and making it just the right thickness for the other steps of the process. After the stone sets up, you have a model of a mouth. And now it's on to figuring out how the two pieces of mouth come together in a bite. The bite registration is one of the most sensitive parts of the step. A lot of people bite differently when they have to think about how they bite down. And if you bite sideways, your teeth will be lined up to the wrong spot and they'll look crooked in your mouth and you probably won't be able to chew. In order to get the best idea of a bite, I make what are called wax bites. I use a flame and the end of a butter knife, I know, really fancy, but it holds heat well, to shape a bright pink wax into an approximation of a denture, if all the teeth were pink and joined together. At this point, the wax is just serving as a gap filler for where the teeth will be eventually. I make these to fit their mouth ridge specifically, again, carving a very particular shape so it feels somewhat like a denture and not like a giant chunk of wax. Then it's time to bring the patient back in. They will put the two blocks in their mouth, feel around a bit, then bite down as straight as it can. The doctor then marks where the center of their teeth would be and puts marks or soft wax in place so that when it gets back down to the lab, it's clear how the two pieces come together. The next step is articulating those mouth models. What that means is using plaster to secure the models to a metal rig that mimics a bite motion. When it's all properly articulated, you can open and close the models and it should look like how the patient's mouth opens and closes. From there, it's passed to the lead denture technician, who is not me. Exactly how this step is executed is not something I know, but from observation, I can tell you this much. The next step is setting the teeth in place. Fake teeth come in little sets. You choose an upper and a lower set for the front six teeth of the mouth, then an upper and a lower set for the molars. You choose the tooth shape according to the ridge size and shape. The patients pre-select the shade of tooth they want. The lightest, whitest shade is the most popular, but the most natural looking are the second or third or sometimes even fourth darkest shades. They have oval teeth and triangular teeth and yellower teeth and bluer teeth. It's a Dr. Seuss novel of choices. Well, the lead lab tech selects the right teeth for the case and sets them into place in the wax block melting it down to look like gums around the teeth. 
Then they make sure the bite comes together just right so the patient can actually chew with these teeth. This area brings the greatest challenge for the lab techs because of how different everyone's mouth looks. The end result should all look like straight, ordered teeth, but sometimes a mouth ridge is pushed really far forward and the teeth have to subtly slant back to prevent an overbite. Sometimes the ridge is super flat and the wax has to be thicker to give the teeth a gum line to stick into. It can be very tricky. But once that's done, the patient gets to try in their realistic-looking dentures. Sometimes they hate it. Most of the time, they like it but have a few adjustments, and then it gets sent back to the lab. We make those adjustments, and if it's a lot, we have them retry it, or if they're small, we just make them and then get it ready to invest. The investing process is where the wax magically turns into a pink acrylic and all the teeth stay in the exact same place and it's all the same shape so it fits just right and everyone is happy. That's kind of how I thought it worked before I learned the complicated process. So you know the end result is a fully plastic denture, but until the investing, it's still just fake teeth and wax. In order to replace the wax with acrylic, I carefully embed each individual mouth model in layers of plaster and stone and some putty. I pour the layers into a metal flask called a case. There are three layers and many steps between pouring to ensure that the cases can pull apart halfway through the process, but stay closed tight for the rest of it. And then, at the end, break apart in just the right way to remove the stone from the denture without breaking the plastic denture. After the three pours, all of the cases get oiled. This melts the wax, so after a few minutes, I go and open each case and pour the water directly in to wash all the wax out. If I've done my job right, all the teeth stay securely in place in the plaster even without the wax, but sometimes they get knocked out of the case in this step, and then I have to drain the 10-gallon boiling water tank carefully in search of the tiny plastic tooth. Once, I lost a tooth on the floor, and it was maddening trying to find an off-white tooth on a dirty off-white floor, but we didn't have a backup for that specific tooth, so I searched in increasing panic until I found it. We have had teeth, occasionally, vanish off the face of the earth. But most of the time, it's just pouring hot water over stone and plastic teeth, and then it's on to the next step of painting each half with separator while it's still hot. Then it's another step that has so much nuance and so many ways to go wrong, which is mixing the acrylic and packing it into the case. The trick with this step is about timing. The acrylic has to be firm enough to pull apart in a snapping motion, but soft enough to roll into ropes to push around the teeth. After the acrylic is hand-pressed into each half of each case, the halves are rejoined and the whole metal flask goes into a press. I twist the handle firmly down until I can't move it more and slowly let any extra acrylic squish out of the case. I do this for each flask, usually working in a batch of 12 or so. Then I reopen the case, check to see that it's properly filled with acrylic and that no teeth have moved out of place. Then I put the patient's name in and close the case again to squish down once more. After the second pack, I recoat half of the case in separator again and move the flasks to a smaller version of the press, put the pressure back on via hand crank, and finally place the cases in a curing unit and set the timer for about nine hours. The last of it happens the next day when I use a knife, a hammer, an impact chisel, and prayers to open each case without harming the precious contents of a roughly finished denture inside. After some grinding, refining, smoothing, and polishing, the denture is complete and ready for the patient. In most cases, they need minor adjustments to fit comfortably and accurately, as the whole process involves some shrinkage of materials. But nine times out of 10, that denture is done once the adjustments are complete, and I hopefully never see it again. Sometimes the whole thing has to be redone because it just shifted too much. 
Sometimes the patient just changes their mind about the details, like the tooth color, after they see it all complete. And sometimes the patient never shows up to pay for it. Understandable, honestly, dentures are not cheap. And that's how to make a denture. There are so many other methods of denture crafting now, but this method used to be pretty much the only way. 3D printing technology is creeping into a lot of denture labs, but in the opinion of the lab I work in, it hasn't quite gotten good enough to replace this method. Nonetheless, this is a dying method. Aren't you glad you know about it while it's still around? I feel lucky to have landed a job that pays me to sculpt and carve and otherwise do sculptural work. Painting is my best art talent, but I love stone carving and woodworking, clay shaping, metal casting, and all forms of sculptural making. I get to use my attention for detail on each case and know that every little bit matters. If I carve something with slightly too much of an edge, it feels sharp in the mouth. Imagine carving something that people will be exploring with their tongues all day, every day. The details matter in such work, and the details are what I'm best at. I'm feeling lucky, and I'm glad you stuck around to learn about this cool job. If you liked this video, please let me know by hitting the like button, and go ahead and subscribe while you're pressing buttons anyway. That's all for this one. I'll see you next time, friend. Bye.